So Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 1, Episode 2, Miscommunications. Let me tell you something. Karen and Sharice, if I continue to do this, they're going to get ready each time because I just don't understand. Sharice, you came on to the show last week talking about how you felt offended and you felt the way. And I can understand and see exactly why you do the shit that you do. Because when you, fir- you said you first moved into Potomac, they treated your ass and thought that your ass was from Section 8 housing and stuff like that. Like as if all niggas is from Section 8, you know what I'm saying? I can understand you feeling offended by that. And so you took that in your mind and you was like, let me go ahead and, um, you know, prove to these bitches that I ain't Section 8. I can afford this. I can do this. I got this amount of class. I got this etiquette. Let me change myself up because I know you didn't come from shit like this. I can just tell it in yourself. I can tell it in the look of you. You know, you didn't come from the world like this, okay? You, some somewhere deep down inside of you, you used to probably be a real down-to-earth type of person. Now you're this uppity, bougie, uptight bitch, and I guess it comes of lack of dick or something. I just don't understand why. Um... Karen, same thing. You, a farmer's daughter, okay? That's fine. You come from a farm. You you know, your people were sharecroppers and all that stuff. You didn't want to come from there. You didn't want to... You wanted more for your life. That's cool. You grew up. You found a man that had money and you um got married to him, okay? You coming around here told him what he has accomplished, the money that he has made. What exactly is it that you've done and, how, and what have... What is it that you do in the world besides putting on charity works and stuff like that, being a socialite or a housewife. What is it that you do, okay? Because you talking about everybody else and this etiquette and this and calling these people to help and stuff, bitch, you do not understand that, you know, as quickly as you got that position to be in a a, a rich man's wife to get this status in the world or whatever that you think that you have, you know, it can quickly be taken away from you and you can easily go down to being the help, okay? So that that that, that irked me because this episode starts off where it left off last week. They still at the crab boil. They're still in their feelings, okay? Um, Sharice, she's still over it um, with Giselle or whatever. Karen and uh, Giselle, Karen just over the bullshit. She was like, girl, let's go to her status, okay? We finna go and... Kerry came up and said something to him or whatever, but the stylist and, and, and the stylist was just like, um, you know, you don't have to talk to me. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. And then she was like, who are you? Who are you? Okay. Um, no, you don't, you don't talk to me like this and you're security. Don't call me, baby. Don't call me this. Okay. Where's security? Take them out. And he was like, oh, you security, you security, you know, you security. And that's all that he did. So, of course, being the type of person that she is, she going to take offense, making it seem as if he was balling up his fence to come and fuck her up. And I'm sitting here like, really? I said, Giselle, you don't need this type of shit. Just go take your dude and leave because it would not have been me. One of them would have been popped in the mouth. I'm sorry. You know, you try to act as if you have good sense. You try to act as if you can, you know, behave yourself in public. But then it's always somebody that want to come and test you, all right, and that's just, a, that was just a test, because I probably would have felt that test, because Karen and Sharice would have been, um, cussed out, they would have been cursed the fuck out, okay, and then I don't know which one it was, you know, when they, um, um, left out the door, gonna say some. sometimes you gotta leave the hood at the hood, or some shit like that, okay, 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 see this judgmental shit. Like I just, uh, it irks my. <sighs> you bring in the help, the help. That's her fucking friend. You up here being offensive as fuck. Okay, just because you're in your feelings about some stupid shit about a seat and shit, girl, get out of here. You know. And um, Katie, we gonna move on. Katie, they um, she in this whole thing talking about. You know, she's uh, seeing a rabbi. We want to go into her background knowing that she's Jewish. She's a black Jew. Okay. It is not something that we've never heard of. Well, most people never heard of. I've heard of it. I've seen it. I know of some, you know, and it's not this very far-fetched thing. Okay. You it's you probably don't see it often, but there is a such thing. And I say that because, you know, they finna do the naming ceremony and for her two little girls and, um, Jewish names or whatever and she's going through her little history about how she's this and how she converted her mother converted because her father was Jewish Jewish 
and, you know, she turned, like, Jewish or whatever when she was 10, 12 or whatever, and, you know, she was, you know, orthodox, and she did this and she did that, but when a guy asked, can you speak this, do you know this, no, and I was like, so do you practice it, girl, what the hell is going on, but okay, you know, at least you're trying to keep some type of culture alive in your family or whatever, that's fine, but, um, and, and, and you know, she... Andrew, her dude, he's Jewish too. And that's who she likes. She likes white Jewish men, okay? And I guess you can say that's understandable because that's what her father is. But, you know, we can go into a whole different and longer video about this black and white stuff. But, um, yeah, that's what they was going to do. So, she was talking to the dude and to the rabbi. And he was like, she was like, can I um have Andrew up there with me? I mean, he's my soon-to-be fiancé. Let me tell you something. Andrew, right now, Andrew and Katie, they are not on the same page. They are not on the same page. She's so ready to get married. He is not looking for that yet. He, She going to push this man away. And we're going to see it in the cup, upcoming episodes or whatever. Um, you know, the rabbi was like, well, since he's not the kid's father, I mean, I don't know. But I guess, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but um, when they actually get to the naming ceremony and... Giselle comes late and all these like I hate for y'all to be so smart and uppity acting and you know oh the proper etiquette y'all making the dumbest comments of oh my god I didn't know about black Jews I didn't know that this dude do you go to the synagogue and you know I'm pretty sure they be looking at you like girl you know you don't belong up in here where the fish fry this ain't no fish fry like come on can we stop with the judgmental stuff? Like, that's just, the, that was a dumbass comment, Giselle. I like you, but that was a dumbass comment to me, okay? Um, that's something that you probably should have kept to yourself because that did make, make me look at you like, girl, what? Like, you sound ignorant saying something like that. You know, everybody, just because you're black, does not mean that you're going to be a Christian. Just because you're black does not mean that you're going to be a Christian that goes to a Baptist church or a Methodist or Episcopal, okay? You can be black and be Catholic. You can be black and be Buddhist. You can be black and be Hindu. You can be black and be a whole bunch of other Islamic, okay? Uh, a Muslim, a Jewish. You can be a whole bunch of different religions. It's, it's, it's a lot of religions out here, okay, that you can be, regardless of your skin color. I'm just saying, okay? You know, open up your mind to that, all right? Um, then you won't be so surprised and be like, oh, I didn't know, you know, so fine. Moving on from that, they do that first of all. And then Giselle, you showed up late in the middle of the ceremony. She was like, bitch, I didn't know. I said, well, you know, they're not, you, you, you putting out the stereotype of the CP time. And I'm like, well, come on, let's, let's stop that. Let's stop that. So, um, they did get at the, the little naming ceremony afterwards. You know, her kitty kids are cute, okay? And um, they were sitting around robbing her and a couple of her other friends and Giselle. They were talking about the race thing, you know, because Katie is biracial. And, you know, um, they was like, so what do you call yourself? Or what do you, what what do the girls, what, what are your kids? And Katie said an honest answer. She don't know, okay? And, you know, I understand that. Because she really don't know what to call herself. But, I mean, I understand she wants to call herself biracial. And to be honest, that most likely is the correct thing. Because she's not 100% black. And she's not 100% white. She's not just black. And she's not just white. She's black and white. You know, so she is biracial. But in society's eyes, and, you know, go back to that one drop of blood. That one blood drop rule or whatever. Um, You're black. You know, that's what you're looked at as in society. You're look at, looked at as black, you know, African American. But to be quite honest, she is biracial. She's black and white. And when I when I say and I feel like when it comes out of my mouth if I call somebody biracial, that means that they're taking, you know, pride in both and everything that makes them, you know, not just one side because there are some people who are biracial and they only prefer the black side or they only prefer the white side. But see with Katie, you just don't know where her mindset at because she already put it out there that she loves these jewish white guys she loves white guys especially the jewish ones and it's like have you ever dated a black guy you know how strongly do you feel about you being an african-american as well but you know we'll see as time goes on because later on in the um season there's going to be this big blowout 
about, you know, the color issue or whatever with Katie. And I want to see how they handle that. And, you know, Giselle and Robin put it out there. They know we're both, you know, full-blooded African-Americans just ha happen to be light-skinned with light-colored eyes and stuff like that. And that happens, you know, whatever. Fine. Okay. So, we get to see with Cherise and her daughter... You know, they're doing a cheerleading practice and all this stuff. And, you know, her her, her um, husband is over in New Jersey. So, she's just talking to her, trying to get her into school. Okay, fine. Moving on from that. Karen. Karen. <clears throat> she talking. Here she go. Ray Ray. Ray don't call no grown-ass man no Ray Ray. No, we are not teenagers no more. We are not in our 20s. Ray Ray. Ray Ray. Ray. We need some more length and iced tea because, you know, on diet, she like her iced tea. You know, she she like her length and tea, okay? And it got to be extra, extra hot. You know, bitch, I guess on diet is related to Ray. And, you know, according to Karen, she's the one that taught her about how to uh, get around in this family and how the family works. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I apologize, you guys. I've been holding that in. You know when you be having to sneeze and you be thinking that it's coming and it just don't? That just happened and it just came out of nowhere. But um, anyway, <laughs> I might be another one coming because I always sneeze in three. But um, I don't know why. Is Does anybody else be crazy like that? I always sneeze in three. Threes. In threes, you know. But um, yeah. So Aunt Dot comes and, you know, she gets out the car. You got Ray's brother, um, uh, Aunt Dot's kids and stuff there. You got Karen's 17-year-old daughter, the one that's about to go off to college or whatever. They're sitting there, bitch, right off the bat, Aunt Dot was sipping that tea and she said, mm-mm, this shit is warm. It's warm. <laughs> I said, Aunt Dot, <laughs> Aunt Dot was over it from that moment, okay? And then, you know, they start talking about the education and I, I do agree, you know, she, she, get your education, but she was like, you got to get your doctorate, okay? And all this stuff. And um, then here come Karen. Make sure you major in something that can actually make some money. I said, we see where your mind at. Mm-hmm. You just don't want to be poor again. But it's fine. So, moving on from that, Giselle, she feels like, okay, she still wants to have a friendship with Sharice because she's never gotten into a big argument with Sharice like this. They've been cool forever. And then same thing with Karen. But, you know, she like... Let me just, I thought about it, calm down. Let me just put out an invitation to just sit down with the both of them and to see where our heads at, apologize for my actions or whatever, and see can we move forward. She's trying to extend an olive branch. She has her kids help her. You know, I thought that was a cute little scene, but I probably wouldn't involve the kids, but it was still cute to me. And she did what she did because she did a hell of a lot more than I would have. You know, you disrespected the hell out of my, um, my, um, friend. Okay. And I understand where Sharice is coming from. Don't get me wrong. You did not ask to bring somebody else to my house, but you do not have to act the way that you acted, Sharice. Okay. And you did lie. Okay. You did say that, you know, it was okay for old dude to do your head because that's what they show in that clip when they actually went on the head and, um, you know, showed the playback. And it just irked me the way that Giselle went out of her way to please these bitches. And I was like, uh-uh, I would never, I would never go that far. You have to be someone that I truly, 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 truly love and care for, for me to extend an olive branch like that to know that I'm wrong. Because, but then again, if I was in a real friendship with somebody that I truly, truly care for and love for, love, if I know that I did a part in something, I would have said, you know what, regardless of if I was wrong or right, I would have came forth and said, you know, we got into an argument. I don't like arguing. I apologize for my part in it, you know, and I just want us to get back on the same page, you know. That's, I would have came right off the back with it. Ain't no way in hell I'm finna be putting out for bitches that I can't stand who obviously don't give a fuck about me because that's exactly what they show. She went and got them flowers. She got a car for them. Fuck that, Okay. You, you out your goddamn mind because these bitches are so unappreciative. So unappreciative. They in the car like, uh, what she want? You know, she's still fucking up. She just don't get it. This is that, da-da-da. And then Sharice come up in there. She's sitting there with her arm on the thing like, 
uh, why are we here? You don't get it. You don't come in my house like this and you don't do this and then you be loud and you do this and you do that. And I'm like, you asked her to come over to help to do the fucking crabs. You wanted to have a crab boil and bitch, you didn't even know how to do the fucking crab. She is out here trying to help you and you talking about she being loud and all this stuff. Bitch, the crabs was trying to get everywhere and they was dropping on the floor. So, of course, that's what was the noise coming from. You being petty. You being extra petty. She trying to apologize. She trying to get down to the bottom of what the real reason is for you being upset. But, Chad, you don't want to hear it. Karen, you don't want to hear it either. You pissed off about being at a seat for your birthday. Girl, get over it. Get over it. Oh, you don't know the right etiquette. This etiquette, that etiquette, this. And I'm sitting here like... Really? And I said, Giselle, like she said, no, not ever again. Okay? No, not ever, not never again. Don't do it again. Fuck these bitches. Sharice, she gets up. She so, uh, like, girl, what is your problem? Like, why are you so pissed? She is trying. But then here go Karen. You don't want to take responsibility. I'm giving you, this is going to be the last time that I um put out an olive branch to you. And I'm sitting here like, Karen, who the fuck you think you are? You said it like... You the in all be all. You know what I'm saying? You ain't nobody. Like, come on, girl. I just can't with Karen. <laughs> like, Karen really thinks that she is so above everybody. I just, ugh. And Giselle was not giving it to him. Giselle said, okay, well, if you don't want to be here, you can leave. Sharice was like, uh, no. Karen was like, I can get my own flat car. Okay, whatever. I don't care. And then she told Sharice, you can take the car if you want to. You don't tell me what to do. I said, girl, get out of here. This is a waste of my damn time. I can buy my own stuff. I said she was going to buy y'all food too. Mm-mm. 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 You could have shut the fuck up and been like Kenya. Ate that free food and just let that shit. Girl, I just, uh, that, that whole scene at the end of the episode pissed me off. So they're like, girl, I just don't get it. And then they get this thing where we get introduced to a new character, a new cast member, Ashley. She's 26 years old. She's also biracial. And she's married to a husband who's white and he's 55 years old and I think he's Australian, whatever. I said, but then I was like, okay, girl, do you, you know, maybe y'all click cause you know, sometimes, um, women mature a little bit faster, got, um, more, much more mature than men sometimes, you know, so maybe they do got something in common, but my, me personally, I like an older person. Okay. That's what I'm attracted to, but that's a little bit too old for me, you know, but Hey, to each his own, they seem like they okay. And it irked me because this thing irked me again. Because when we get introduced with to Ashley, they was at a charity function. Um, Robin, Giselle, and Katie. And um Robin, Giselle, and Katie, they see Ashley. Ashley is telling them what the charity is about. She's trying to explain. And then they, you know, you got Giselle just going off asking all twenty 50 questions and shit just back to back, back to back, getting a little bit too personal for, you know, somebody that you just met, if you ask me, but Ashley took it in stride, you know, and then when it got to the comment about how old her husband was, 55, and then all of a sudden, Ashley said to another friend that, you know, because Giselle gonna put it out there talking about some, oh, he need Viagra, and then she was like, no, but he big or something like that, and a dude behind them turned around like, what? And then here come Giselle calling her thottish, and then you know, I'm sitting here like, what's well, stylish about that? She's a, she's married, okay? She's married. She's proud of what her husband has. You know, since you over here asking 21 questions about their marriage and their relationship. And because he's older, can he still get it up? You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you turn your nose up at her and talk about some, um, because of the way that she was dancing and carrying on at the party. It's a party, okay? She's having fun. And then gonna call her ratchet because she did hump, um... Robin just a little bit, but she was trying to get everybody to get, you know, into the mood and, and have fun. She was like, where the music is, where we can twerk or whatever, you know, and I can kind of like, I, I think I'm going to like Ashley because, you know, Ashley, you can clear, she didn't come from that world. She came from having to eat food from the church because, and being damn near evicted twice or whatever, being poor and stuff. And now she's, you know, at this upper echelon or some type of money or whatever now because of stuff that she do but child judging her calling her ratchet and stuff just because she was trying to get the party started and all this stuff i didn't see nothing ratchet about what she was doing what i saw was somebody that was young having fun and trying to get her guests to have fun too that's what i saw but child was sitting there being uptight that's what i saw 
But I can't wait till next week when Giselle, <laughs> when Ashley was like, so wait a minute, because you call me a thought, all right? And um, there's nothing thottish about me. She was like, well, your behavior, you know, you're acting like a hoe. She was like, what is it about me that a hoe? What does a hoe do? A hoe sleeps with a lot of people. How am I a hoe when I sleep with one? And I said, oops, there you go. <laughs> but y'all, it was okay. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. I gave I gave a actual full review. I didn't even do this for um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. But um, y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.